All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Allie. I'm an educator here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Happy Monday. Uh, we are going to be exploring today the wonderful world of octopuses. Alrighty, so if you do have any questions or want to participate, you can shout them out. You can tell your neighbor. Uh, if you're at school, you can ask your teacher, but you can also text us. And that's this number right below here. It's 562-286-1838. I have my friend James over at the computer there, ready to take any observations or questions, or if you just wanna say hi, uh, we would love that as well. And I have my friend Cynthia behind the computer over here, controlling all these really cool things behind me. Now, if you're watching this when we are not live, so not 10 a.m. on Monday, uh, we do ask that you email us, and that's this email right below here, live at lbaop.org. Alrighty, so uh, we're going to start off talking again about octopuses, but we put up this behind me here. Is this an octopus? No, these are jellies, and they actually have something in common with our octopuses. So uh, go ahead and brainstorm what might they have in common with our octopuses? Now, while you're doing that, teachers, uh, if you are watching with any of your students, if you could go ahead and text this number and let us know how many students you have watching. That helps us to gather a little bit of data and better serve our community with these programs. We really appreciate it. And I'll try to remind you in the end as well. All right, everyone. So what are, what are we... What are we coming up with? What are we brainstorming? Hmm. What do octopuses have in common with this animal right here? Now, this jelly doesn't have a brain. So, hmm. Octopuses are very smart. But what else do they have? Hmm. Well, let's think about internal. Hmm. Now, these jellies, do they have a spine? Do they have a backbone? or a skeleton for that matter? No, jellies are really just kind of tissue and water. They're still animals, but they don't have a backbone. Well, that is the same for our octopus. So we'll put up a picture of an octopus here. Octopuses also do not have a backbone. They are what we call invertebrates. Ooh, really cool, great view here. So invertebrates are animals that do not have a backbone. So that includes the octopus, that includes the jellies, that includes um, sea stars or snails. Lots of things actually don't have backbones. So if we were to look inside of here, uh, they pretty much don't have any hard parts except for one, and we will talk about that. So what do you notice about an octopus? Well, we know that they're an invertebrate. They have no backbone. What else do you notice about this octopus? Hmm, what stands out to you? Hmm, again, you can go ahead and text this number. Any observations that you might have, 562-286-1838. Hmm, what do you notice here? Uh-huh, you might have said tentacles or arms. That's another thing they have in common with jellies, right? Jellies had all of those tentacles all around them. Well, these are kind of like tentacles, but they are called arms. So the difference between an arm and a tentacle is actually kind of towards their end. Um, basically, tentacles only have suction cups right on the end um, and they're used a little bit differently for feeding. They're typically a little longer too, whereas octopuses actually don't have any tentacles. They have only arms and they have eight arms. Mm -hmm. So that's a definite uh, characteristic of an octopus. What else do we know about octopuses? What else do you notice about them? Well, on those arms, you might notice they have all of these suction cups. Yeah, they have all of these suction cups. And we're going to talk a little bit about how those suction cups work, 
what they do for them. Uh, so again, uh, you can definitely text in any questions that you have about octopuses. Now, one more thing that kind of is unique to an octopus, uh, besides the fact that they're an invertebrate, is that they're a cephalopod. Hmm. So they're related to things like squid, um, things like a nautilus. Have you ever heard of a nautilus? That one's a little bit different, uh, but they all have a very similar body plan. And that is that their head, right here, is sitting kind of on top of their feet, right? There's no like torso in between. Yeah, and that's actually what cephalopod translates to. Cephala, head, pod, feet, head, foot. Head foot is what an octopus or a squid uh, kind of translates to. Because that's kind of just take a head, put it on top of the feet, and there you go. <laughs> you got an octopus here. Uh, so again, two new words for us today. Invertebrate and cephalopod. Cephalopod. Now, I want to start brainstorming. What are some adaptations that octopuses have? So what do they have that helps them to survive in their habitat? Well, we talked, they have arms right? And they have these suction cups. Ooh, this is a great view. Now, my friend Cynthia put up this view of a giant Pacific octopus. Giant Pacific octopuses can get really big. I mean, the name giant is in their name, right? They are the biggest octopus. Uh, they can potentially get to really, really big, but their average is about 30 pounds, which for an octopus with no bones, that's pretty big. So they uh, can get to around 30 pounds on average and a, a, a wingspan, what we say, or so if an octopus were to go like this with one arm and this with the other arm, uh, that would be about 14 or 16 feet. Uh-huh, that's very big. So the, these are uh, definitely the biggest octopuses that we have here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. And those suction cups do a lot for them. Now, what, what could they do for an octopus? Hmm. Go ahead and brainstorm that while we answer some questions. We have some questions uh, coming, coming um, in. Ooh, and one of them is actually, how do suction cups work? And do other cephalopods have them? Ooh, while we're on the topic of suction cups, well, these suction cups, they are all they can mo be moved individually. So just kind of, um, have you ever seen maybe a chameleon, how they can move their eyes independent of each other? Well, octopuses can do that, but on a bigger level because they have over a thousand of these suction cups. They have a couple hundred per arm. Now a couple hundred times eight. Whoa, that is a lot of suction cups. And they can move each of them independently of each other. Now, they can use their suction cups to explore. They can use their suction cups to help them rip open food. They can help their uh, get their suction cups to maybe uh, attack maybe some of their food or maybe help them avoid predators. But guess what they also do with their tentacle or with sorry, with their suction cups on their arms here? They taste. Hmm. They taste with their suction cups. Pretty cool, huh? So if you ever see an octopus maybe kind of searching around, maybe similar to this, they are tasting. And they can actually know who is who, people-wise, who take care of them by their taste. So they can actually uh, taste maybe your arm as your arm is in there, maybe petting them. Uh, they can actually tell who is who just based off of that. All right, and do other cephalopods have them? Yes, they do. So I'm not sure if we have a picture of a squid here, but has everyone seen a squid? Yeah, they look kind of similar. They have a larger mantle. It's a little bit higher. That's that kind of head region. It also has all their organs in there. And they do have those eight arms. So they have eight arms with those tentacles on them, just like the octopus. However, they also have two tentacles. So I mentioned that they're a little bit different. Uh, the tentacles are a little bit longer on a squid, and they only have suction cups on a little triangle area at the end. So 
Oh, here's a here's a bobtail squid. Is that? Yeah, it's a bobtail squid. Uh, so this is just an example. It has all of their arms kind of tucked in right now, but they have those eight arms and two tentacles. So yes, they do have, um, all cephalopods do have those, those uh, suction cups. Ooh, are an octopus and a nautilus similar? Ooh, that's another question that came in. So a nautilus is a really cool, kind of ancient animal. Go ahead and check it out. Ooh, do these look like an octopus? Hmm, I notice it has kind of some of these arm tentacle-y looking things, right? But what is this? Hmm, that's right, this animal has a shell. So this is a really, really ancient animal. It's been around for a very long time. Again, they're called nautilus. And they still have a shell. Whereas other cephalopods, like an octopus, has actually evolved away from having a shell. So they don't really have too many, they have, again, that one hard part that we'll talk about, but it's pretty small. Whereas this uh, Nautilus here has this big shell. Now for a squid, they have a remnant of a shell. So that means it's kind of like a leftover uh, throughout the transition of evolution. And they have what's called a pen. So a, a squid, its mantle is kind of long like this, and they have a pen. It's a little piece of, it almost looks like plastic, almost. And that helps them keep kind of a rigid body while they're pushing through the water. So this animal, yes, they are related, but you can see they're actually a little bit different, right? Um, so these have stayed the same for millions of years. Ooh, now another question that came in is, how do octopuses breathe? Ooh, let's see if we can get a video of one of our octopuses up. And uh, let's see if we can see any sort of breathing movement. Let's go ahead and check that out. We'll give it one second here. I want you to also think about, hmm, well, how do other animals in the ocean breathe? Hmm. What are some common themes that they have underneath the water? Let's see. Do you see anything kind of moving? Now, do you think that if they were to, you know, breathe underwater, would they use their, would they use their arms? Hmm, probably not. But what do you see kind of pumping right here? Yeah, exactly. So this region, this whole kind of, it almost looks like a head or a big nose. Yeah, that's actually their main portion of their body. Again, that's called a mantle. And that's where all of their organs are. Their hearts, yes, hearts, they have three. Uh, they're in here. Uh, their brain is in here. They have lots and lots of organs in that region. And they also have gills. That's right. So just like other animals in the ocean, or quite a few of them, uh, they have gills. So they do pump the water in through a siphon, and they are able to kind of do that. Ooh, this is a good, good view here. So there's that siphon. So when you see an octopus, it might be doing this, and they're breathing. Exactly. So they're taking that water in, they're exchanging that oxygen over their gills, and then they'll push it on out. The siphon is also used for things like expelling their ink. So if you've ever seen an octopus try to avoid a predator and go, and all this ink comes out, that's where it comes out of. Ooh, go ahead and watch this. You can kind of see the octopus. There he goes, it expels their ink out of, that, out of that siphon there. Now that siphon, they can actually move it around. So did you see it was on one side of its body and then it kind of tucked it behind and moved it to the other? Let's see it one more time. Because it's pretty interesting. It's a great adaptation. Ooh, it can go into pretty small spots too. All right, here we go. There's that siphon on one side. It's gonna kind of bring it down to the other. And then, woo, pretty cool, huh? So they use that siphon for quite a few different things. Uh, but of course, one of the main things they use it for 
is, in fact, breathing? Great question. Uh, now, another question that we have is, what does the octopus do all day? And how do we take care of an octopus? Those are both really great questions. Now, we have, um, uh, we're going to focus a little bit on our, on our um, main octopus, which is our giant Pacific octopus, okay? We're going to focus on that one a little bit more because each octopus is different. Now, our giant Pacific octopus, how do we take care of it? Well, they don't eat every day. Yeah, so they only eat a few times a week, and we can feed them. I see another question that Augustine has was, what do they eat? We'll feed them crab and shrimp. They really like those invertebrates that kind of live on the bottom. Um, and we can feed them a couple times a week. We maintain their water quality. So that's constantly testing the waters, making sure that there's the right amount of ammonia in there, the right amount of salt, the right pH, all of those things we have to look at all the time to make sure that this octopus is nice and healthy. Uh, we also need to maintain its, its uh, basically enrichment. So if you were kind of just sitting in a room all day, you might get a little bored, right? Well, octopuses are very, very intelligent animals. So we put things in their exhibit for them to kind of, you know, enrich their lives. So we can give them different, we'll call them toys. And we can put food in those toys. We can just give them toys to play with. Uh, there's lots of different things that we can give them to kind of give them a little bit of enrichment. But our giant Pacific octopus hangs out most of the day just kind of against rocks. So they don't really do that much because um, they're not really out during the day too much. And we also only have one octopus in there. So we can't have more than one octopus. They would fight and compete too much. So they just have one octopus, but out in the ocean, they would just be kind of in their den in like a, in like a cave by themselves as well. Um, let's see. Another, oh, oh, my friend James looked up. Uh, here we go. My friend James looked up a little bit more for us about that question about the Nautilus and how they're related exactly to an octopus. And it turns out that recent DNA evidence is re-explaining cephalopod history. Ooh, how cool is that? So new technology, new DNA evidence is re-explaining cephalopod history. They don't think um, the Nautilus is more like the ancestral cephalopods. Instead, they are hypothesizing. So again, that's making that educated guess that there were other things like the octopus back in history too. So who knows? Uh, so sometimes it's really cool. You can find fossils of animals like this Nautilus because they have hard parts. Octopuses, that's a little harder, right? Because they don't have any bones. They don't have a shell. So what exactly is being fossilized? It's pretty difficult uh, to tell. So that's pretty cool. New DNA evidence. Thank you, James, for uh, that information. Now, I did mention that an octopus does have a hard part. Hmm. All right, let's go back to our octopus. Where do you think a hard part might be on an octopus? Hmm. Well, it's not these arms, right? We saw how flowy and kind of squishy they are. It's not that mantle. But where is it? What might they want to use something hard? Hmm. Now let's think about what they eat. Hmm. Crabs, shrimp, things with kind of an exoskeleton, right? Which is hard. So they're going to need something hard to break that. So they have a beak. Mm -hmm. It looks just like, actually, a parrot beak. And I have a squid beak over here. It's very similar to an octopus. But I'm going to go ahead and turn on a special camera over here and show you exactly what I mean by a beak. All right, let's see if this is... There we go. We're all warmed up. You can see my hand here. Awesome. So this is a beak. Now I'm going to put it just like this. Oop, that's, the lighting's not very good. There we go, you can kind of see it there. So this beak right here, this is, again, you can see why it's called a beak, looks very similar. 
but this beak is what's inside of all of those arms. So if this were all eight of their arms, their beak would be just like this. And that is their mouth. This is what they use to crush their food. Again, this is from a squid, uh, but octopuses are very similar as well. So they use that beak and they can actually uh, crush food and, and then ingest it that way. Now again, that's the only hard part of their entire body. So if they want to go say through a little hole this big, well, if their beak can fit, they can fit. So that is their limiting factor, which is so, so cool. Anything their beak can fit in, they can fit in. So sometimes uh, we'll give them little tubes that they can go in. Again, another form of enrichment, something fun for them to do. We can give them tubes to kind of go into or actually other things that they can use their uh, bodies to kind of rip open. All right. Now we talked a lot about, well, different, different adaptations that octopuses have. We talked about uh, ink. We talked about their arms and how they eat, how intelligent they are. But there's one more thing that really makes an octopus stand out to people or not stand out. Hmm. Do you know what I'm talking about? <gasps> yes, their color, their camouflage is so amazing. Now we have a couple videos of some of our octopuses camouflaging and ooh, go ahead and take a look at this. All right, keep in mind it's red, right? Oh, what did you notice happen? Yeah, can you really even see it? Oh, well, now it turned red again. <laughs> wow, let's watch that one more time. What do you notice is happening? Wow, its color completely changed to match its surroundings. They are really, really good at blending in. So not only can they change their color, but they can also change their texture. All right, now, now let's watch it with texture in mind. So again, that's how bumpy or smooth they are. Whoa. So they can actually change the way they look. So uh, they have something really special. They have cells on their bodies called chromatophores. All right, chromatophores. And those chromatophores can either expand or shrink to show different colors. So if an octopus were to expand a red chromatophore, it would be red, right? The bigger the chromatophore, uh, the more that you're seeing. And this is kind of what they look like up close. They can change their color, expanding and shrinking uh, to create different, uh, different colors. And they also have, uh, I believe they're called uh, papillae, I think, uh, that actually uh, creates um, those, um, those ridges here so they can also change their texture. Alrighty, if anyone has any questions, again, feel free to text in 562-286-1838. Now, I thought we would take, ooh, this is actually another really cool video. Let's go ahead and watch this. Wow, it just came out of nowhere. Oh, that's pretty awesome. All right, now I thought we would take a look at maybe some of our octopuses and looking at just how intelligent they are and them using their enrichment. So again, I said that word enrichment quite a bit, but it's something we can give to our animals to kind of stimulate their brains. So you go to school or, or maybe you do crossword puzzles or something to kind of keep your mind engaged. Well, we do that as well for a variety of our animals. We do that for seals, sea lions, otters, octopuses, even other just smaller fish. We give them things to kind of encourage them to use their brain a little bit. And there are some pretty cool ways we can do that. So I'm gonna have Cynthia pick maybe something that she thinks is interesting and we can go ahead and watch one of our octopuses using their, uh, using their 
their enrichment. Ooh, okay, so this is one of our giant Pacific octopuses. Now this is being above, this is above the exhibit. So uh, we're looking down on the exhibit. And what do you notice here? Well, there's a big octopus and there's a boat. Are there any, any things in the boat? Mm-hmm, there's a crab, there's a crab in the boat. Now crabs are one of an octopus's favorite foods. Mm, and do you think it knows it's there? Is it kind of, oh, it's changing its texture a little bit. I wonder why it's doing that. But we can actually put the food in the boat. And this gives our octopus, this is Godzilla. That is his name. He is a giant Pacific octopus. And he needs to figure out, well, what's the best way to get this crab out of this boat? Hmm. But also, he's so smart, he knows, well, I don't want to eat the boat itself. I just want the crab. So there he is tasting with those suction cups that we talked about and using those arms and pulling it all the way underneath the water. So let's see what, what pops back up in a moment here. While we're watching this video, we do have a question coming in. What is the smallest octopus? And it is the uh, octopus wolf. Wolf eye. Okay, octopus wolf eye. That is their scientific name. Um, and they are a pygmy octopus that only gets to about one inch wide and weighs only one gram. Very, very, very small. All right, and oh, you can see. Where's the crab? I don't know. I'm pretty sure he has it. Um, and then there's this boat left over up here. So pretty cool. You can see just how intelligent they are. Now, I like that question that came in about, hmm, well, how big is the smallest octopus? Because we're talking about the biggest one. Well, octopuses actually all start off really small. The octopus, the female, can actually lay thousands of eggs, and they are very, 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 very tiny. Now, a lot of animals in the ocean, they lay thousands of eggs, but they do this knowing that only some of them will make it to adulthood. So the, the octopuses are very, very tiny. So to give, you, to give you like kind of a scale, this shell is probably about this big. So it's even tinier than that. And they lay thousands of eggs uh, and then those octopuses grow up. Most, uh, most of them do not, but some of them do make it uh, to adulthood. Yes, they are very, very tiny. Now, once the female lays her eggs, she actually spends most of her time just protecting those eggs, which means that she's not going out and feeding as much. Uh, she's really, really interested in just keeping those eggs nice and safe. So a normal uh, life lifespan for an octopus is actually not very long because once they lay their eggs, they do pass on. Uh, so they don't have any parental care. Once their uh, eggs hatch and those little baby octopuses are out, they are on their own. They don't raise their young uh, like mammals do or like, uh, like people do. Uh, they don't do that. Once they hatch, they are on their own. And the, the Mother octopus just keeps all of her babies uh, until she passes on. And again, pretty cool, these little tiny little octopuses here. All righty, everyone. Well, I had so much fun talking about octopuses today. I hope you learned a little bit about how cool they are. If you have any other questions, you can go ahead and email us right down here at live at lbaop.org. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, teachers, again, if you are watching with your students, we'd love if you texted in how many students are watching so we can better uh, gather that data and serve our communities. But other than that, uh, we will see you on Wednesday. We have more equipment. Online Academy. Alrighty, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.